Hi, my name is Maureen Crow, and I'm thrilled to be moderating this panel on Mark Batson's score and the original song co-written by Tariana Tank Ball to the Netflix film Sisters on Track. We're here with the directors Tuna and Corinne and the composer, songwriter, and Grammy-winning producer Mark Batson. We're also joined by the Grammy-nominated Tarina Tank Ball from Tank and the Bangas, who are also the winners of the NPR Tiny Desk Contest. Sisters on Track is a coming-of-age story set in Brooklyn about three sisters, Ty, Rain, and Brooke Shepard, who excelled in track and field to become junior Olympians and were named Sports Illustrated Sports Kids of the Year. They accomplished all of this while living in a homeless shelter. This film is about their resilience and the community who rallied to help them. So I want to talk to the directors first, Tona and Corinne, about the approach to music. Yeah, I think uh, when Corinne and I started to make the film, we tried to gather all sorts of uh, inspirations. We were looking at books, at films, at poetry, photos, and of course, also music. And then uh, Corinne came to me one day and she said, oh, Tuna, you have to listen to this album. And, and we listened to Tank and the Bangas and it just really stuck with us. And uh, it's been with us in the whole process. And it's been the source that we've been going back to through the course of, of the filmmaking. And it just feels <laughs> so unreal that, that, yeah, that you have created this score and this original song for our film. It just feels amazing. So Corinne, why Tank of the Bangas? The film takes place in Brooklyn and all this different yeah. I agree, Tuna, what you said, it's, it was something that really stuck with us. And I think it's, it's Tank's voice, first of all. It has, it has a quirkiness, it has a gir girliness, but it's also very empowering and deep and complex. Going into this film, we just felt like we wanted, we wanted to have that inspiration with us at all times. And one of the songs from Think Tank, the first album, Roller Coaster, is actually um, made it into, into the film. Um, and was a huge inspiration uh, for our editor and for our cinematographer. And, and I think also it was the reason why we got to speak with Mark uh, and got to meet Mark uh, in Brooklyn when he was visiting from LA, uh, visiting his mom. Uh, she lives close to me. I live in Brooklyn too. <laughs> so remember Mark when we met um, and you, you saw the footage? Uh, it was pretty amazing. And I think this emotional connection that Mark directly had to the story made it this organic fit uh, and I remember he told me about his father how um, how his father actually is an opera singer uh, but never got to be one uh, and worked uh, what, what's the exact story Mark? <laughs> My father sang he sang opera uh, but you know this was in the 70s and there was not a lot of work for black opera singers during those years uh, may, maybe even less now um, but he was just fantastic at it, brilliant. And he sang in a lot of community opera. So I got to see my, my dad play the Pharaoh in Aida. I got to see him in Carmen. I got to see him in a lot of community-based operas and, uh, and some of his friends as well who would perform uh, Porgy and Bess uh, every year at the Metropolitan Opera. So uh, I, I kind of grew up with um, classical music and classical singers and and my dad being a great inspiration, and my mom as well, to uh, giving myself and my brothers and sisters piano lessons at an early age. And I know that was a really important point uh, for both directors, that they have a very authentic voice and music to this film. So being part of Brooklyn, and just also a kind of similar arc in a way of kind of, how do you say it, Mark? Making a way where there's no way? Making a way where there's no way. I, I, I see... You know, music for me, you know, you know, coming out of Brooklyn, you know, we, my, my brothers and sisters, we had piano lessons and uh, we all practiced like an hour of piano, you know, every day. And uh, during those years, people who lived in the neighborhood, young, young guys from the neighborhood used to come up to our floor to listen to classical piano and smoke weed. And uh, I think from that point, as a kid, I realized that music was a universal language. It's not, you know, it's like whatever somebody has available to them that they will you know, have opportunity to connect to it in their own, in their own way. That's helped me in the, in the scoring process. Um, I think this movie especially is about, you know, it, it, it hits to me in a bunch of different ways. One of them being 
the discipline um, that's applied to their running is, is, is similar to the discipline that was in my home in regards to uh, education, in regards to practicing music, and, uh, practicing piano, learning your lessons, that kind of discipline. But also uh, there were girls in my neighborhood, my sister's friends who ran in the Colgate games. So, and that was a big privilege for the people for Bushwick Projects and a great honor when we would see the girls uh, come back from the competition and, 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 and win prizes and things like that. It was very inspirational. So uh, when I heard about the film, I immediately connected to the idea of working on it. And then uh, seeing Tank, you know, to, just to talk about Tank and the Bangers a bit before I don't want to go too long for somebody else talks. <laughs> but the first time I saw Tank and the Bangers perform, what I walked away from was from it was not a performance, but a religious experience, uh, a, a deep spiritual connection that was far beyond just listening to somebody play music. And uh, I think that's what Tank has is this gift that's beyond singing, that's beyond music. It's just way more spiritual, way more powerful. And um, I just wanted to have her voice uh, as much as possible uh, used on this film to connect to the spiritual nature of what's going on with these girls, their mom and coach Jean, uh, which is something beyond, you know, uh, just running itself, but they're, they're, they're fighting for their lives. They're, they're fighting for their hopes of the future. Uh, it's something much more powerful at stake. And uh, I just believe like Tank is, was, is, and is the perfect voice uh, um, for this project. Well, you know, I do want to talk about Tank the poet and uh, you really emerged as a poet and then, you know, evolved into music. If you want to talk about that, I know that the directors were influenced by Gil Scott Heron. You know, I know Mark and I talked about uh, Curtis Mayfield, you know, all these different influences musically. So if, if you want to talk a little bit about that tank, about what uh, attracted you to the film when we finally approached you to see, like, if you were interested in co-writing with Mark. I mean, first of all, I'm just so happy to call Mark a friend. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so like you. Oh, my God. Uh, thank you. Oh, thank wow. You. Just that's you that's saying that. these things made me believe in my own self just a little <laughs> bit more in those little three seconds. So I just can't imagine uh, what we've done for these girls' lives with these poems and these songs and his, and his writings that were just made specifically for them. I mean, when you get uh, little Black girls that are passionate and, and consistent and disciplined about something, it inspires us all. You know, everybody wants to be disciplined about something. Everybody wants something in their life that, that they do well and consistently. And when I see them, it, it, that's what it gave me. Like, I want to I wanna practice my scales every day. You know, I want to I wanna go start running. I want to eat a little healthier. You know, I want to reach my goal. And, uh, and to see them uh, literally go through everything in their life and still have something to wake up for and to reach for, it inspires us all. It inspired me. It, and, and, when, and when Mark gave me the train, it was nothing, it was nothing to write to. I mean, it was, not, it was so easy because their story is right in front of your face. I mean, you, you can't help but write down exactly what you see. They are inspiring. Yeah, I know when, Mark, we had talked a little bit about, um, you know, the score having the coming of age elements, you know, that was like a hero's theme. And then also the element of time being important. And the directors can talk about this. I mean, the girls, their running time, the time in their life, how much time they have before they, you know, made that scholarship for high school, for college, like they're running against the clock. And how did that influence the score and the song? When creating it, we were building uh, I'm working closely with Corinne to build to the story um, itself, this dynamic story. And then what, what we wanted was to have, we felt that uh, the, the girls needed themes. They needed the musical themes or, 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 or melodies that were just specific um, to, to what was going on with them in their lives. And then pacing those melodies over the uh, entire film so that you get taste of them and colors of them as they grow. So. Um, every, everything created for the film was created to work uh, in, in the confines of this race uh, uh, where, you know, it starts out, it, it, you feel this victory when you first see them, when the, when the film opens, because, you know, the powerful song is talking about the dream and, and, and then, but then when you go and see into their lives and, and, and look into the process of 
of, of what has to happen on a daily basis in order to them to get to the next level. Um, that was so uh, intense for me. And, and, uh, and, and that's why the music was paced and written to be able to follow uh, their growth or follow their growth and also their, their problems in life and the dilemmas that they faced as well. I mean, there is a certain amount of tragedy that they're lifting themselves out of. We're, we're talking about, you know, three girls who don't have a place to live, you know, who, 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 are, who are houseless, you know, in, in, in this time period, this is something that's a huge problem in America. And, uh, and they're in the middle of that. And, uh, and they do get some help. But even with the help, um, it's, it's still them going through these really difficult times um, and enough to say, OK, we have to do well in school. But then we also have to try to focus on this dream as well. And um, that's the tricky part. That's the, for me, we're growing up in Brooklyn as well, um, that there was a certain amount of like street things that you had to deal with. You know, was, there were gangs and there were drugs and all that. So you, you're kind of dealing with what's going on in your neighborhood and area. But at the same time, you have this other huge mountain, which is you got to learn your books. You got to have your studies. You got to learn your math. You got to learn all that. So, you know, a, a lot of kids around America, um, they, they do have the opportunity to just deal with school to just go to school. But then there's a lot of people who grow up in tough neighborhoods who all grow up in poverty situations who have to deal with school and survival. And um, so crafting the music to deal with the fact that they have to do, you know, go through these two intense things at the same time, it, that was the challenge. And uh, it was very enjoyable to uh, be able to support them musically. Well, the challenge, I also, yeah, I totally agree. And the, and you know, you you travel, and the directors can speak on this. How many years did you track these girls? So even though you're going from year to year, the piano theme, you know, of the opening, and you know, Christmas, and all those things, as a whole, so personal. I felt at those points. Was that something you were trying to accomplish? Yeah, we we filmed them for for a period of. Four years, but we kind of compressed the film to be, you know, a period of two, two and a half years. Um, so, so w when we first kind of get into the film, uh, they they have they have their soft landing, as we as we say, right? They they get their place from from Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry has, you know, has given them two years of, of free rent, and um, and the score that Mark made, that 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 music that music that plays when they enter the space, I think. It was some back and forth, right, Mark, to get it right. But then when yes. it when once it landed, it was the soft and complex and and deep uh, un deep understanding of of Tonya, the mom. I think of of how she could now finally take a breath. And I think for the girls, it meant that they could finally start to dream. This was a new experience, actually, using an original theme. Correct. I know when we first started working together, you talked about really only using existing music and like having a scored with something you weren't necessarily completely comfortable with. And Tona, I mean, in terms of how things evolved, do you want to talk a little bit about that journey? For me, I always feel, you know, a little bit afraid to work with composers on any of the films that I've been working on. I feel that, you know, Mark, you have this uh, access to this world of rhythm and emotions and this magic that comes from music and um yeah and, and i feel like i'm kind of like a little bit standing outside that but i felt when we talked through the film and we especially when we talked about the girls and jean and tanya i felt like the way you saw those characters the way you read them and the complexity and insight that you can that you could add to us having you know worked with them for like four years that just felt like you were opening a door uh, for me also to understand them better through the music you created and, and i'm very sure that you also opened the door to the audience to understand the characters better i think gene you know like you spoke about tonya corinne and i agree on that and i think also with jean she's she's very tough with them and as you say, there are a lot of unjust hurdles uh, that these girls need to face and to carry on their shoulders. It's a very heavy weight for such young girls. Uh, but I feel the way you uh, the, the way you created the theme for Jean, you really expressed the love and enhanced the love that is beneath everything she does 
for those girls. Like it seems, she seems a bit hard, but I think your music really brings the love that she feels for them and which motivates her to, to be a coach for 30 years. That really comes across beautifully. The take, when you, when we approached and the directors approached you to do this, I mean, what was your first reaction to the film? Did you identify somewhat with the girls or? I mean, just culturally, it's, it's just easy to relate, period, honestly, because a lot of us grow up with a lot of similar stories and we just grow up with a lot of, the, I mean, like, it's just, it, that's just the way it feels. Um, I just, I like that they were just, they were so focused. You know, it reminds me of my own life, of how, of how focused I can be and, and really into something that I love. I think it's so cool to, to be into something really young because when I grew up, I was really into poetry and I was really into poetry slams. And, um, and, that, and I was in HBO's Brave New Voices. And it was the first time that I met a lot of teenagers that was just like myself, a lot of passionate young teenagers from all around the world. And when I see them at these track meets and I see them with their sisters and their friends and, their, and the other ladies that they run with, it, it reminds me of how everybody has their own little world. You know, um, the, the gamers have their world and the Olympians have their world. And, um, the singers and the musicians, we have our, we have people that are our heroes. You know, if I meet a poet on the street that I'm in love with from Deaf Poetry Jam, I'm going to go crazy. And, um, and I know that they feel the same way about people that they truly look up to. It took me back to my, my childhood and my, my teenage ship when I was really passionate about something and I found people that were passionate about it as well. I think that when you find something young in life, that's really positive and cool. It could keep you on a positive trail and meet you, and you could, you could be able to meet your heroes and you could travel the world with your gift. And I think that's the coolest thing that God could ever give to you. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful way of saying that. That's fantastic. I mean, you know, it's such an amazing time right now in film because so many more voices are being included. And I just know that the directors were very passionate about making sure they had the voice of Brooklyn and the voice of these girls. You know, just a little aside, like Mark and I have worked together for what, over 15 years on various different film projects. He's been my kind of go-to, like going back to beauty shop, just getting some score source piano pieces. And now he's that person for so many people. It's just amazing to see this kind of evolution. And to have that, just that magic of the director's vision and like, and all roads were leading back to Mark. We would talk about different art, you know, Mark has produced everyone from Dave Matthews to Eminem, you know, to Tank and all these different things. And every time we talked about an artist, it's like, oh yeah, Mark's worked with them. Oh yeah, Mark's worked with them, <laughs> Mark's worked with them. So it just became a perfect symbiotic moment when all these things come together. And I think the directors felt that way. And I'd love to just talk about that experience because it's also during COVID. I mean, we have everybody all over the world. Corinne's in Brooklyn, Tuna is in the Norway, Mark was in LA. Tank, I think you were in New Orleans, right at the time? Well, I already know. I'm in New Orleans, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I already know. <laughs> and so how was that experience kind of all working together and kind of out of body in a way? I think there was definitely some magic going on. Uh, I, I, there, there were definitely some people, you know, watching over our shoulders and trying to say, "This is this. You're on the right path here. Um, continue." Uh, you know, be, being being with the girls and 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 in the story for you know for four years and and meeting Mark, I felt you know the same. What that Tuna said, we just felt like this is this is the organic fit. This is this is the key. This is you know the. And then working with Mark through through COVID, like having this whole pandemic and all being distant, but still being so feeling that synergy, it really felt like this connection of of energies that came together. And and the fact that you nailed that, you know, that that score, the way you nailed it, I think I think it was Maureen and Janet that sent sent the email, and they said, "Stop everything you're doing and hit play." <laughs> Um, I, I was, I was walking, you know, I was walking on the street in Brooklyn and I, and I, I hit play on my, on my iPhone and I could, couldn't stop dancing. I was like, I was so, I was in awe with what the two of you had created, uh, in that short amount of time. <laughs> and I can speak like there were no notes. It was like, oh, okay. Yeah. That all works. That's great. And Tuna, you were telling a little bit about the reaction your 12 year old son had to the score at one point. Yeah. I think I just wanted to say like, um, 
Corinne and I, uh, and also coach Jean, you know, like while talking about the film and while we were making the film, we talked a lot about this film being really important for young girls and being a really, yeah, kind of like a tool for empowerment. And, uh, and Corinne and I, we were uh, traveling on a bus with the Shepherd sisters at one point while we were filming. And then this mom came up to us uh, with her two young daughters. And she asked, you know, are you the Shepherd sisters? And, and, and Rain went, yeah. <laughs> and then she said, yeah, we saw you on TV. Can my daughters hug you? And the daughters hugged the Shepherd sisters and the mom started to cry. And she just said, you know, it's so important for my daughters to see uh, that they can that they can make something so well in their lives. And she's seen them on The View. And for her, it just meant the world that their daughters had such good role models in their own neighborhoods. And I think for Corinne and I, it felt just really important uh, that the film would speak to a young audience, uh, that we kept that girl in us, that we kept uh, the fun of being girls also. And I think, uh, Tank When Your Song came into my mailbox. I was in my living room and I pushed play and my 12 year old son was staring. I didn't say anything about the song or anything. I just put it on the speaker and he just got up and he just started to dance. <laughs> and it was just amazing. Sometimes you really dance from your heart and that's what he was doing. And when he did that, I just felt like, oh, this, this score is just gonna, you know, it's just gonna, really speak to the young audience and and that just felt so great so funny i always test my music with my nephews and nieces and i, I just put it on in the car and out the corner of my eye i'm just looking for their approval i'm like <laughs> are they dancing are they feeling it you know and if they not i'll be like damn it's not the one so i know exactly what you mean putting on something because we're always trying to grab the attention of the youth you know because it sounds corny but they really are the future and they're so cool so we want to impress them but um it, I, I, it's, it's best to be yourself. And this movie is about young people. So to have a song that affects them right off the bat is, you know, that's the, that's the home run. I love how this, how the song and the score, you know, keep that energy going of that constant kind of push. And then you get the piano score in between that are those quieter, intimate moments that kind of pull you in as well to being like, okay, now, you know, we have some personal time, but now, oh, next day we're back back, back to getting the dream, you know, and that was really so well crafted, I thought, that throughout the entire film. Did you find that a challenging experience, Mark, to actually kind of crafting that all the way through? I mean, I, for first I would say, I, I love to work with Tank when we're together um, because we have such a good time creatively and our whole crew, she's surrounded by some of the best musicians in the United States. So just being able to hang with them and be in the space with them is always fantastic for me. So it was different to uh, us to work, you know, the way we work, which was, you know, with this new thing, like over the internet with the, you know, this digital thing. But she just, uh, Tank is such a fantastic poet and singer that uh, it, it was, she just did it with ease. It was just phenomenal. Like when, when, it, when it came back, it was just so much great stuff for me to work with that, that it was just a matter of just like, you know, uh, bringing up bringing up a vocal and matching it to the track and and and, and getting it and getting everything to sound great, like a great record. But I think the recording itself um, really captures to me uh, the intensity of the dream of these of these girls. And I'm not just saying the dream to win a race or to be just great athletes, but also the dream of survival, the dream of survival that that we all have, um, that that we all can identify with. I think. That that when what Tank did to it uh, lyrically and melodically was just something that connects, you know, that their dream to everyone, uh, to to ev everybody has that kind of you know thing they want in life or, or or thing they're after in life, and and are they willing to put in the work to get there? So the song just captures that for me, and it was just a lot of fun to work on it. It was just. Well, a lot I think it all goes back to the directors making a film that you both That's responded to. Film. So, you know, right off the bat, I mean, you know, I, you know, there's so rarely that you get a song in or even score and you have literally minor notes or like Corinne talked about like, oh, let's play with the, 
right tone for going into the new apartment and all that, but so minor in terms of something that's really rather complicated. So to me, it just shows the casting is everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and a film to cast the right composer, the, the songwriters, the whole thing, and the artists to get that point of view. I, my, my, my hat is off to all of you, to the directors making this wonderful film and the beautiful music that inspired it, you know, that, that, that kind of the, the film that inspired this beautiful music. So is there anything else you want people to know about the film as we wrap up this panel about making the music, about approaching this kind of, you know, cause it's, it's an unusual kind of pairing, you know, in, in terms of a story that was four years, but I think the music really ties in all the themes together so strongly that I, I think it's a, a great experience to listen and to watch. I just want to send a shout out to the mothers and the sisters of Brooklyn, um, which this film is about. You know, my mom just had her 85th birthday. So uh, I was just in New York with my mom and my sisters and, uh, and, and my nieces, my nephews as well, but uh, my nieces, but the whole connection between the mother and the sisters of Brooklyn I just want to say that the reason why I came on this project is to share that love, um, to commemorate that love, to, uh, uh, to, to show honor to the love of, of those who raised me. You know, my sister, older sister when I was younger was athletic, super athlete, who could also beat me and my brother up in the fight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> there were girls in the neighborhood that were like superhuman, uh, young black sisters who, who athletically were superhuman um, in, in my neighborhood. So just a salute um, to the women, to the coach jeans, um, to the moms, um, to, the, to, the, to the young girls who are, 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 are striving and want to do something in their lives and everything they did to inspire me, uh, that my mother and my sister still continue to inspire me to this very day. Well, thank you all for a great panel and thank you Netflix for, you know, this film and this great musical opportunity for Mark and Tang. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.